Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dice Tower. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Joy Evans. We are taking a look today at Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds, the latest in the Maximum Apocalypse line of games. A series of games in which the players cooperate, right. going through stories, moving, flipping over tiles, discovering stuff, playing a character with their own deck of cards, trying to achieve some mission. Survive mostly and achieve something you're trying to do. Right. So this is the latest in that. It's going to give you a few new mechanisms uh, to the system. It's going to give you a couple of campaigns and a few new monster types, characters, what have you, okay? I'm going to give you a look at what it looks like on the table. We'll come on back. We'll discuss what comes in here, what we think of the previous ones. Uh, I've played the original one. You've played I have, that yes. as well. Yep. Uh, and just, again, just give you some general thoughts who we think this might be good for. So take it away, Z. The game comes with three books. You're going to get the Learn to Play Guide. You're going to get this mission log, in which contains uh, all the missions. In fact, two mission campaigns in here. And then the supplemental mission log with some that adapt previous content, but require some of the previous products in the Maximum Apocalypse line. So right now we're going to be focusing on this here. You are meant to play through the campaign. And again, there's two campaigns in here, but you can also just do a one-off. And here I have set up mission number four from this first campaign, Beasts of Winter here. So it gives you a little flavor, uh, some setup, and they do go into each other, but you can just do a one-off. Mission setup over here, and then possible map suggestions. I have the middle map set over here, but I've pretended to have, you know, I've, I've flipped some up from our example here, some of these tokens. Uh... Then we've got the mission objectives, some actions you can take, and then the conclusion, which again, will be the flavor text, the story that we are dealing with. So, I'm going to give you a turn breakdown of what a turn would look like in the game, but I'm also going to largely focus on what's new in this Maximum Apocalypse versus some of the other ones. And the main thing there is this over here. This board, which is called uh, the clock board, you have on the player aid here, Gives you a breakdown of some new things and the passage of time is represented on there, okay? So I'll be focusing on that mostly, but let's go ahead and take a look at a breakdown. So a turn has seven steps. I am playing the contractor out here who happens to be standing over there. I have a mammoth engaged with me. I have a deck of cards and a health dial. So on your turn, the first one is spawning monsters. I'm going to take this. I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to spawn on anything out here that has that number. It's a 12, and I would check this number over here. If there are no 12s, I don't spawn. If instead I had rolled, uh, I don't know, let's say a 5, then I'm going to spawn on every 5 out there, and I do so by putting a monster token on there. Next up, I am going to advance the time. The time is going to advance 1, unless I roll a 7. None of these tiles have seven, so it's a guaranteed no spawn, but then the time advances four clicks, all right? Uh, if the clock gets to or passes any of these, then we are going to be dealing with those effects. And like I said, I'm going to come back to that board later on because that's the main focus of what's new in this box. Uh, step number three, draw a card. And add that to your hand. You do have a hand limit of ten cards, so you'll be drawing one card from your deck. And if this runs out, you lose. Uh, and then you take four actions. Those actions can be moving to an adjacent place, drawing a card, playing a card, performing a card action on something that says action, da da da, da and it's on, on the table in front of you. You can uh, scavenge, which is if you're in any location that has one of these symbols, you can scavenge from the corresponding deck. And these decks are always the same for the for every session of this game. In previous products, you would have to build this deck based on what mission you're playing. Now they are set. They're always the same. You can just shuffle up and play. Uh, then there's also all these new actions that have to do with tribes. If there is a tribe in play. They are parlay, trade, or reinforce. Those things have to do uh, and are available to you only if these tribes are in a specific location down here. They are can be either allied, trade, wary... Angry, irate, or enraged. And they are going to, again, behave differently based on where they're at. Um, 
Lastly, or rather next, is the step number five monster activation in which any monster in front of you is going to attack. And they all activate in line from right to le uh, from left to right. Uh, next, we check hunger and status effects, so your hunger goes up. And if you have any status effects, like weather affecting you, you're going to deal with that. And then you check to see if you win, that's the final step. And then the next player goes to the top over here. If you become too hungry, you're going to flip this card over and start taking hunger damage. And you might even die from that. And your power, your innate power also goes away when you flip over. And if you eat, you flip back over to this side, alright? This die here represents your hunger. And it takes up to six. Uh, so that's the idea. So let's talk over here about this board. Whenever you hit daytime, you're going to move all the monster tokens on the board in the direction that the arrow points. So all of these right now would move one up. This one hits the edge and will not move. When we get to the weather phase, unless you are inside, you check this for every player, uh, then you are going to get a weather card. The ski resort over here has a little house. The uh, suburbs have a little house, so you're okay there. But if I'm in the ice cliffs or the caverns, I have to deal with the weather. Uh, there are several decks here. Based on the missions, you use different decks. And so the first one you take, if it's this one, uh, the exposure deck, this one says at the end of your turn, you suffer two damage. So if I only have one, that's what it is. If I get another one later on, then I take that one and I flip it over and they stack. This one says, when I draw this, I suffer six damage, and then it's done. So it's a one time, whereas this one is a recurring one, all right? And there's a few different ones in that deck, but on the back of them is always Frost Nip, and that's always what you take first. When we get to the night time, we're going to draw one of these cards, and it's going to have some effect. Abandons camp, each player chooses one, cure a status effect, or reduce their hunger by two. Great, that's a good one. Sometimes they're bad at night. And then when we get down here to the tribe cards, then this token marking wherever they are moves one towards Wary. So if it's here, they are a little less friendly. But if they were irate, they start calming down a little bit. All right. So talking about this, which is the final thing I'll cover, uh, the tribes which are shuffled into the monster deck will end up in front of you as any monster would, and they are going to behave differently based on where they are on that board. So if I have this character from the Norse tribe over here, if they are um, angry, irate, or enraged, when they activate, they attack me as any other monster would. All right. If they are wary, they are going to attack me also, but then this card goes away. If they, are ally, if they are in the trade position, they will not attack me. They'll also not really help me. Uh, and I am allowed to do the trade action, where I discard one of these cards, and I get another one from any deck, then they go away. I've traded with them, they go away. We put out a new monster token wherever I am. If they are allied, they become really helpful. And they will, in fact attack for me, and I can give them hits. I can assign them hits, okay? I can do a couple of new actions where I can reinforce and move them either to someone else's line of monsters or just rearrange them in my own line because when they activate, they're going to attack the thing to their right and help me. And like I said, when I would take hits, I can assign it to them. Though they do get angry when they take hits, so they'll start moving over this way, all right? So that's the new tribe abilities and some other things, and the clock board being a big part of it. You are going to continue doing this scavenging in these tiles once per turn at every tile only, drawing cards from these decks, gathering fuel, gathering food and spare parts, and gathering ammunition and equipment, uh, trying to, of course, complete the objective of the mission. And if you manage to do that, you win. If the players all die or uh, you are eliminated some other way, then you'll lose the mission. So there you go. That's a very brief and general overview of what's going on. Let's go ahead and go back up top. All right, there we go. So right off the bat, I uh, want to point out and mention that I reviewed the original game. Yeah. Which I like. I think I rated it a 7. I enjoy the system. It is a system that comes with its flaws. It's very... American style. I don't know how else to put that. It's got a lot of flavor. It's got a lot of theme. Lots of great illustrations. 
a world that feels vibrant and it comes chock full of questions <laughs> for it, as to how things work. It does. And I love the artwork on here. It's great. Gorgeous. And theme, of course, is good. And the idea of moving around that map, it's fun. You know, you can flip the tile, see where you are. Can you search here? Can you not? You know, you have a monster. And at first, it's very... The hardest thing for me to wrap around at the beginning was these monster tiles are sitting out there, but they don't engage with you. You can't shoot them because they're over there. Little rules like yes. that, that that get to the point. Let's start with some of those uh, comparisons right away. Yeah. This still has a bunch of rules questions you're going to have to parse and figure out, okay? It does. There's an FAQ on BGG where the designer has answered a bunch of questions. You're going to want to check that. There mm -hmm. are a lot of things that are going to force you to go to the rule book. You might find the answer. You might have to parse the answer out from other suggestions. Again, it's kind of a messy system. It it's is. It's sort of a given. They haven't really done away with that in this box, I think. Okay? No. This one still manages to be kind of a messy system. Yep. But I think this box elevates that original design by introducing quite a few new things that I think make the game easier to get to the table, mm -hmm. and more thematic and just more interesting, okay? So, starting right there with things that make it easier to get to the table. In the original game, and in many of the sort of follow-ups, you had to build that deck of tiles that you were going to need every right. time. The mission would say, you need two of this, one cavern, two whatever, the police station. you got to find all those, shuffle them up, set them out. In this one, if you're playing a campaign... Uh, or any of the stories in the campaign, because you can just do one-offs, all the tiles are the same no matter what chapter you're playing in there, what mission, okay? Right, and that was the big thing. That was a... That is, I can't understate how huge that is. I agree. Because the whole thing, that was what delayed this. And as the box got bigger, because I've got the expansions, I've got the big box, as mm -hmm. that got, a, got bigger, it got more exhausting to try to find these tiles and these cards and assemble everything. You would spend... 40 minutes getting it ready to play and I think when it hits a table this quickly I'm a lot more forgiving on some of the fiddly nature of the the questions you have during the gameplay because it's a quick game to set out and you just run yeah. through and you can just you can lose brutally quick this is a quick game and if it you is. can get it to the table quickly like you said a lot of issues I shrug off because it's a, it's half an hour, and I got right. it on the table in five minutes. Yes, this should be a quick game. And that changes my entire rating system on this by how quick it can get to the table. Right. Yeah. The search decks are also fixed. They used to not mm -hmm. be. They are fixed. You shuffle it up, and you're ready to go. Um, I really like that. I think yep. the insert in here is also very much facilitates getting the game set up quickly and ready to play. Right. Okay, so there's that as well. And then the content. I'm talking about just missions in general. There is a ton of content here and online. So you've got this mission log. Two full mission, uh, I guess, campaigns in here. The supplemental mission log for previous content to bring it up to speed with some of these mechanisms. And then you can go online and get a like a legacy campaign as well. It's just nuts. I mean, there is so much... Probably too much, in my opinion. Like, right. you know, it's just... But but again, you're getting the content. There's a lot that you're getting for this box. Mechanically, we should talk about what's new in this one. Okay, yes. besides, obviously, again, set up and getting it to the table faster. Right. So there's a few new things. There's that weather board or time clock board, whatever it's called, okay? With the passage of time. Mm -hmm. Very cool idea. And you're going to have on there a few parts. You have a weather deck. When you hit that, if you're not inside, you're affected by weather. Right. And there is like a cold weather, a desert type deck, and what have you. Really like that. I yeah. think that's great. It adds theme. It forces you to think about where you end your turn in case you hit that. I really enjoy that the clock is mostly predictable, but if you roll a seven, that's it great. goes four clicks. Right. So you might get there if you roll a seven. I really like that. I do too. There's a night and day deck, or it's the same deck, really, but during the day, the monsters might shift. At night, something comes out. Sometimes it's pretty punishing and brutal, mm -hmm. but I really like that. Very thematic, very fun. 
And then there is the tribes, and I'm not quite sold on the tribe mechanism. So again, I love I love most of what's going on on that board. The tribes come bundled with a ton of questions, and or or just rules, I should say, not questions, rules. They got too many rules. The tribes remind me of a side story in the movie you don't really care about. They keep yeah. they keep showing up because you're focused on. Uh, for you, the, no, the gameplay, you're focusing on that in that apocalypse, whatever's happening. And you want to focus on that, but then you've got these tribal guys and they're angry and you're like, stop, I don't, you're not really part of this movie. Right, you know, right, it's just, right. they feel fiddly. I don't really, I don't know, I, I don't hate them, I don't love them. I'm not really embracing that part of this game. Yeah, I agree with that. They, they're there to help the story. And if you want to not do a one-off right. and instead go through the campaign then they're going to add some theme. You can read that flavor and all these guys were upset with you, then you help them start the next chapter by being on friendly, you know, whatever, uh, trade. That sort of thing makes sense. I just, there are a lot of rules that tie into when you parlay with them. What do you give them? They mm -hmm. get friendlier and then you can trade. And what do you give them? And they go away and... Do they attack me? Are they angry? Are they not angry? Do they attack and then go away? They can attack somebody else for me, but then where you put them in your lineup of monsters mm -hmm. matters. Oh, and it gets it, it gets weird because the game is hard enough. It's always been hard, and because it's so, I mean, it's luck based. But now you've got the weather that's going to make it harder yes. the majority of the time. Yes. Then you've got you're wasting actions on these tribal people trying to get them to like you when you're focusing on these monsters that are attached to you. It just seems like that adds a lot going on. Now, it's mm -hmm. over. I mean, you can overcome it. I think it's fine. Yes. But I don't know whether it's worth the payoff for me. It's a... They removed some issues, and then they added a couple of new ones. Right. I think I'll adapt to the new issues. I just wish that tribe stuff was a little cleaner. I, I agree just with a, that. Just a couple fewer rules. I would suck it up and deal with. As it is right now... I'm like, yay, way faster to set up. So much faster. Good. Great characters in here, by the way. The player characters are really fun in here. And, oh, I got to put the tribe out and deal with that. Let me get my cheat sheet. I really, literally wrote out a, like a 3 by 5 on a, on a cue card, basically, for myself with all the tribe rules. This thing here has tribes, how they behave, when I can do this, when I can do that. And I have to have this so I can remember, you know, what happens. When can I parlay? When can I reinforce? How do I sacrifice allies? And then they get upset, right? I need all that here. Right. So there is that, and you just kind of have to deal with that. Um, I think it's worth the lifting. It definitely is. And I'm going to say, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I played the original one. I feel like the missions might be shorter. They are. The gameplay seems a lot shorter. It's like tuned up. It really is. It, it's almost, I would never have used this word, it's a smoother gameplay. There's it a, is. The, now instead of, I think you hit a couple potholes, when before you were driving on a gravel road. Yes, I you agree know? with that. I agree yeah. with that. So I think they're almost, and I think anything, they problem, the problems they have here are fixable, and I look forward to seeing what they add to this system. Yes, I agree, because this feels in many ways... Like a 2.0. It does. I think this is Maximum Apocalypse 2.0. The yes. new setup. The, this is the way it is from now on. This uh, time track whatever thing. This board, this makes 2.0 Maximum Apocalypse. It does. To the point to where I've got everything for it before the big box. I've got everything. I, I will only, this is my starting point. Whatever works with this, I will bring from the old one into this. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, you know what? This is what I'm focusing on. This is and, it from now on. Yeah, and I would say then, if you are interested in this game, you like the look, you don't mind that it's a little messy, it's sort of like, you know, it's American style. It's down yes. and gritty and dirty and kind of lucky, and you're going to have a good 25, 35 minutes. This, I think, is what I would recommend you jump into. I agree. Get this. That's it. Mess with this. That's it. You want more? You can get some extras, but this is your starting point, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I haven't played everything. There might be a better starting point, but I think this is the strongest the game has ever been. I agree, and I think I look forward to them pulling everything back 
into this retooling it and seeing yeah. all those different the kaiju, all the stuff they've re they released, re-release yeah. it or retheme it or at least come up with the rules to make it fit to this system. And in many ways, they have done a lot they of that heavy lifting already. In this supplemental mission log here, has if you have the old content, mm -hmm. then you can play those missions ad adapted to this system. This blew my mind, the fact that you've very got... very cool. This it's is customer really service good. right here. It really is. It doesn't you know? say we forget about the money you spent. We're like, hey, let's 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 bring it all together. This That's is the great. kind of move from Rock Manor here that helps me overlook those things I have a little problem with. Because this is, again, this is taking care of your fan base. It really Putting is. this out. So I really like that. So there you go. That's Those are our thoughts. Uh, let's yep. get down to some scores. I'm going to come in myself... I gave the original one a 7. I'm going to go up to an 8 for this one. All right. I think this is a good, better... Again, this is ultimately, nothing else said, a better game than the original game. Yep. The only thing I have a drawback with is tribes are a little messy, and these characters, because they are not the first characters introduced, are weirder mm -hmm. than the original characters, because they have to do that. You can't give me those characters again, then I, I, you know, I wouldn't get this. But you can mix those characters with this. If you have that original release or any of the other characters, you can put them in here and play in this world with these rules and have a good time. Just be ready to check out the FAQ and maybe, you know, make up some rules on the fly. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that, really. But, um, yeah, I'm giving it an 8. This is... It's fun. It's dumb fun. It really is. And I'm coming in because this right here, it gives... This whole universe gives you... You go up against any apocalypse you want to, whether it's alien, kaiju, angels, zombies, whatever. And they've made that cleaner. They've made it faster. They've made it to where the fact that if you lose, you're like, you know what? Let's run it back. Let's do it again. Yeah. And it's... that. That's what I, that's what I honestly thought the first one was. But that's what this one is. So mm -hmm. I've come up a little bit higher. I'm at 8.5 for this. Okay. All right. I really like this game. And like I said, it would it's going to replace another one, which, which one of my top games. I did love the first one. Mm -hmm. But I will never touch it after this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that is Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds, folks. Check Wasted. this one out if you want to have some... Uh, some you know chaotic fun and on your tabletop in the ma in the apocalypse yeah. and you do yes of course. of course why not so that's gonna do it uh, thanks very much for watching my name is Z Garcia and I'm Joy Evans watch out for the wildebeests with tribes yeah uh, well, it might be wildebeests. <laughs>